Hello. I'm a chemistry professor at the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in western Pennsylvania, USA. I work in the area of chemical ecology. I'm an organic chemist and uh, I've recently begun conducting reactions which it's actually called the Maillard named for the French scientist who investigated the process, the Maillard reaction. It's actually a series of complex reactions and it's an integral part of much of food science and food preparation with the generation of odors and uh, flavor and uh, components of uh, heated foods. It's a reaction between sugars and amino acids. Now I've become interested in this and I'm going to be showing you the reaction between the amino acid proline one of the 20 important amino acids found in collagen and other proteins and proline is actually an amino acid it's a five-membered ring with a so-called secondary nitrogen and we're going to be looking at the, the uh, Maillard process in a microwave oven with the sugar D plus xylose the naturally occurring um, uh, pentose it's an aldose that representative sugar. The reaction, the process of the Maillard occurs especially uh, quickly with the amino acid proline and the sugar D xylose. Now the reason I'm interested in it, I work in the area of chemical ecology and I'm interested in semiochemicals, uh, odors, chemicals with odors that uh, can serve as attractants or repellents I work with land hermit crabs that should be fiddler crabs and the American cockroach and I'm interested in placing Maillard products in their presence and then at bamboozer.com we have live uh, web stream and you can follow our work 24-7 if you go to bamboozer.com, you'll find me at d.s.soriano, S-O-R-I-A-N-O. -O. And right now I have a Raspberry Pi PC hooked up with a webcam, a $15 webcam from newegg.com. I have videos on that at YouTube. And uh, we have that uh, trained right now on the land hermit crab. And once they're acclimated uh, to their new surroundings, we offer them shrimp pellets, but then I'll start to place Maillard products to see if they're attracted to that. Do they ingest it? And um, we're not interested in placing poisonous materials in there, but we want to see if the odors of the material uh, attract them. Now, I'm already finding with uh, the cockroach community that I maintain, they are... Um, showing signs of strong attraction uh, to the materials based on odor and also uh, nutritional value. Now the reaction itself, go to the next slide, here's the basic uh, approach to the Maillard reaction. It involves another reaction called the Amadori and what takes place, the sugar reacts with the amine of choice if it's a typical amino acid, it'll be a primary amine, and you get an imino, an imine, I-M-I-N-E. Uh, a student in organic will study that. It's a very important functionality in nature. Transamination of amino acids, for example. Well, here we're showing a 1, 2, 3, 4, a hexose, a 6-carbon sugar, shown in straight chain. It's a D sugar because this OH here, you're trained, is on the right, so it's in the member of the D family, large D, which means naturally occurring. And in this case, the sugar has reacted with the amino acid of choice, and that will form this imine that will rearrange by an amidori into an enol enamine combo. So that would be an enol enamine and that will further rearrange to an alpha amino ketone and then that will undergo with heating 
and uh, with a progression of uh, heating, let's say between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius. I try to stay below 100, as you'll see. Uh, it will rearrange, it'll cyclize, it'll form complex chemicals in the mixture, color changes, odors, aromas of food, extremely important. And we want to basically show you what's going on here. Now, my reactions, I conduct with simple situations. We're not cooking food to ingest, but selected amino acids, selected sugars, mostly five and six carbon sugars. And uh, I microwave for set periods of time. Progression occurs. We'll be characterizing a lot of this by gas, uh, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. But um, let's start to show you uh, the reaction. I also... With let's say five grams of sugar, five grams of amino acid proline, uh, put in there about one gram of sodium bicarbonate uh, to regulate the pH, and I use about 33 percent by mass water. So there's some water there, but not a lot, enough to mix it up that the reaction is progressing in a homogeneous fashion. So um, here's the first video. This will be an example of the. Maillard reaction, a very important organic chemical reaction in uh, nutritional science, food science, the browning of foods. What we have in this beaker, I have placed five grams of the amino acid proline. Actually, it's an amino acid, a secondary nitrogen in a five-membered ring. And uh, with this very important amino acid proline, uh, five grams. I have five grams of D plus xylose, a, ri uh, a, ripo a ripose diastereomer, uh, five carbon sugar, and um, a pentose. And uh, with that, I have uh, just about three milliliters of water. And about a half a gram of sodium bicarbonate. So the reaction will be conducted on the uh, slightly alkaline side. Now what we're going to do in this reaction is use a microwave oven and uh, we'll get a thermometer over here. And what we're going to do is subject it to microwave radiation. I'm going to use the beverage setting and uh, that is programmed to 75 seconds. And what I'm going to do is stop every 15 or 20 seconds or so. And we want the temperature to stay uh, between 85 and 95 degrees Celsius. So we don't want to go above 100. I'm just going over to look for a thermometer the, there. The uh, color changes that take place as the reaction occurs. Now, what will happen with this secondary amine proline? It will react with the aldehyde group of the xylo sugar. And that will form a so called enamine. And in organic chemistry, generally in the second semester, a chapter devoted to aldehydes and ketones introduces the very important enamine functionality. So the enamine forms by the loss of water, and it works best at actually between pHs 4 and 6 range. And uh, this will then undergo an amatory rearrangement to yield an amino ketone derivative, which with heating and time will progress through a series of dehydra dehydrations, rearrangements, etc. Yield reductones, very powerful antioxidants, and if heated long enough, will dark and dark and darken and uh, form melaninoid Maillard pigments. And uh, that's a subject of interest in uh, human biochemistry because these pigments may very well cause maybe cancer suspect agents, but I'll refer you to the medical journals for that and research along those lines. Let's just focus right now on the uh, 
color changes. And I'll also describe uh, subjective here, uh, odors, the odor of it. So that is the appearance now. And we'll begin to buy for starts at uh, 1 minute 15 seconds. I'll let it go down to 1 minute. A burst of odor will come out. I did not find it pleasant, the smell. Stop. I have my trusty thermometer. Oh boy. Foaming. Uh, and a mean smell. I don't think that right now that that's very much a pleasant smell. We're seeing loss uh, of water and probably some uh, carbon dioxide. We have the sodium bicarbonate in there. And we have right now a reddish color. And the temperature is right now up around 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is stir. But I'm going to let that cool down to around 70 Celsius. And I'll just stir it. And we'll wait until it cools. There's the color. I don't find that myself a very pleasant smell. I mean, I've dealt with some very offensive odors, but I would not find that appetizing. And of course, odors, of aromas, are very important part of uh, food science. But we're seeing a pretty good reaction there. Enough water to allow molecular motion and to keep material from burning, but we don't want to go so high that we uh, lose all the water that's there. Now, you wouldn't want too much water. It'll interfere with the pathway of the amatory rearrangement and uh, overall the Maillard reaction process. We're about uh, 72 degrees. I want to get it down to around 70. And then we'll subject it to additional microwave exposure. Okay, we're at about 70. So I'm going to put this back in there. We'll go to stage two now and uh, watch the progression. Now, this, uh, we're about 90 degrees. Darkening. And it's much darker, more viscous. And uh, when I opened up the microwave oven after a 25 second burst, there were some fragrant odors, uh, constituents, volatiles, such an important por uh, point of food processing. It began to, to me to smell better. Yeah, that's much more viscous now, dark red color. And uh, we're losing a lot of the volatiles in this Mayor reaction. What we'll do now is finish it. Five seconds of radiation at the beverage level. And uh, here's the appearance of the material. Dark red color. Definitely turning, it's a very sticky solid. One more second and we're done. Now watch the door. You can see Volatiles coming out. Hard to see in this. Uh, I had the camera on a tripod. Very hard to describe. Not unpleasant to me, but quite a bit of volatiles coming out. Definitely got we'll a little. That out. You can see that. A little bit better in smell with time and heat. And we gave it a full one minute, fifteen seconds of beverage, low, relatively low setting microwave radiation, and reddish dark red, and we probably hit, oh, 90-95 degrees Celsius. The Maillard reaction starts with an amatory rearrangement between secondary amine proline amino acid and D plus xylo sugar. Complex chemistry occurring, and under these conditions with the bicarbonate to be on the slightly alkaline side, 
um, a progression from the initial off like We'll go to stage three. So this is the completion of 75 seconds of microwave radiation and beverage setting between the amino acid proline and D plus sugar, xylose. And uh, that'll be a, eventually cool down to a uh, somewhat tacky solid. With cooling, it will turn into a solid. Not black. Now, if you were to heat that for maybe another minute, that would probably turn black into the melaninoids. Melanin-like pigments. In fact, what I will do is heat it. We'll go to stage four. Less volatiles, darker, and becoming more of a solid. And then with stage five, this is the final appearance of the Maillard material from proline and D plus xylose. Reddish black. Dark red, somewhat black, so there's melaninoid pigments forming. And this is in solution in water. It will or all dissolve. Not totally soluble, but a mm. lot of it is going in. After about five, ten minutes, it all went in. Heating. So that was a full uh, 75 seconds of beverage on this Emerson uh, microwave. And then an additional 30 seconds beyond that of the beverage setting. And the smell is, it's distinctive, but it's not a mean, it's, I don't find it appetizing, but uh, not offensive, but there is complex changes in the chemistry, and every time I opened up that microwave oven, there was a burst of vapor coming out, and the odors were progressing. In the beginning, very offensive, a mean-like smell, but with further heating, color changes, chemical changes, physical changes, becoming more viscous, and... Uh, that is, most of it is starting to go into solution. So that is the color in water. It's probably around pH 7. In fact, let's check. I think it actually came in at about uh, pH 5.5 with the addition of the water, distilled water, which is acidic. And uh, as I put this uh, video together, after it's been at room temperature for 15 minutes, it's a non-tacky, dark red, almost a reddish black solid with, to me, a spice-like smell. And actually with cooling, it's, uh, I find it uh, intriguing, the odor. Now, it's a no doubt a complex mix, and a lot of the more volatile, lower boiling um, chemicals being produced by the uh, Maillard um, are loss, the loss to the uh, environment when you open up the microwave door. Now, what we will do is, um, in the fall of 2013, my colleague and I uh, will begin to investigate the gas chromatographic mass spectral characterization and uh, we'll try to trap some of those volatiles and uh, my main interest in this is reproducible material at different stages light heating short period of time more heating a uh, longer period of time and then take uh, the resultant materials and um, provide it to uh, the invertebrates I'm studying with to see if they find it attractive if I'm dealing with the American cockroach and I want to try to develop an attractant, I need something that they are attracted to. And the way they will um, react to odors is certainly not going to necessarily be the way we do. And I uh, 
We'll be conducting uh, uh, such reactions with a selection of amino acids and uh, uh, five and six carbon sugars. Uh, here's some contact information. I'm Dave Soriano, Soriano at Pitt.edu. I'm a chem professor with the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Western Pennsylvania. And thanks for viewing. And follow our work at bamboozer.com. Bye for now.